How's it going fellas? My name's Andy and today we're gonna take a look at the three new rules the NBA recently implemented. I'll give an overview of the official definitions of the rules and also give my opinion on how it could change the NBA. And at the end of the video, I also want to talk about what I think should be the next rule change. Alright, let's get started. So, the first rule we're going to talk about is the new shot clock reset rule. The official rule now says that the shot clock will reset to 14 seconds in three scenarios. After an offensive rebound of a missed field goal or free throw that hit the rim, after a loose ball foul is called on the defensive team immediately following a missed field goal or free throw that hit the rim, or after the offensive team gets possession of the ball after it goes out of bounds immediately following a missed field goal or free throw at the rim. So before we start, I should say that the shot clock already did reset to 14 seconds before in certain situations. The most common method was when the defensive team committed a non-shooting foul while the shot clock was winding down. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. With 25 seconds left. 5 second different shot clock to game clock. And there is the foul. Popovich upset at Danny Green with 15.8 left on the clock. 14 seconds go off the shot clock and then foul. That was Popovich's point. He didn't want them fouling. As you can see here, the Spurs are playing the Nets and they're down by two with 20 seconds left in the game. Nets ball. Now Danny Green is playing overly aggressive defense on Mirza Toledovic, but he did not realize how much time was left on the shot clock. There was only 10 seconds left when Green committed a dumb foul, which caused the shot clock to reset to 14. And of course, Coach Popovich was furious because Danny had a brain fart. Now, the Nets still have the ball, but they have a 14 second shot clock now, and there's only 15.8 seconds left in the game. Yikes, so yeah, that was a bad move by Danny. But basically, this type of shot clock resetting has been around for a while. However, the new rules now cause the shot clock to reset to 14 after pretty much any time the offensive team regains possession. Offensive rebounds are the most common situation. We've seen before that after a team gets an offensive rebound, they could bring the ball back out and then run down the clock even more. This strategy affects the end of games a lot, but overall, it doesn't really change much. According to Nylon Calculus, only 6% of all offensive rebounds resulted in possessions that are 14 seconds or greater last year. Also, 75% of offensive rebounds result in a possession that is 5 seconds or less. Most of the time, when a team gets an offensive board, they just go right back up. So besides the end of the game, it doesn't change much at all. Now, when it comes to offensive rebounds, I'm not sure how it'll affect the number of them, but I don't think it's gonna be a big deal. Last season, the league had the lowest offensive rebounding average in NBA history, and it's probably gonna continue to go down, because transition defense is more important. On the other hand, at the end of games, this will cause the offensive teams to use their possessions more wisely instead of just throwing up shots, hoping for the rebound. I think it's better for the NBA because think of all the times at the end of games where you see a team running down the clock and taking a bad shot, but then they get the rebound and then get another 24 seconds and the game is over. This change will force the teams to play faster, less time holding the ball and thus leading to more exciting end of game situations. This will also cause the defensive team to play, well, better. In the overall scheme of things, the pace of a game will increase a little bit, but not enough to where it actually matters. It really only matters at the end. It's also worth mentioning that this rule has already been implemented in the G League, the WNBA, and FIBA. They've been using this new rule for a couple years now, and it's been working well. Now, the second rule change is a bit complicated. It's the simplification of the clear path foul rule. For those who don't know what a clear path foul is, you basically get two free throws and possession of the ball if a defender fouls you from behind in transition. I know some fans wonder why this clear path foul even exists, but I'll explain more later. Anyway, the new rule change now states that a clear path foul is now defined as a personal foul against any offensive player during his team's transition scoring opportunity in the following circumstances. The ball is ahead of the tip of the circle in the backcourt, 
no defender is ahead of the offensive player with the transition scoring opportunity, the player with the transition scoring opportunity is in control of the ball, and if the foul deprives his team of an opportunity to score. Uh, to make it easier to visualize, here's a video clip as an example. Lance Stevenson of the Pacers loses the ball. Rodney Hood of the Utah Jazz starts the fast break and as they run down the floor, Lance fouls him from behind. However, because Lance crossed the half-court line before Rodney, it wasn't called a clear path foul because that was the rule before. But with the new rules, this will be called a clear path foul. It doesn't matter who crossed the half-court line first anymore, it just matters that Lance was behind Rodney when the foul happened. The second part of this new rule states that, under the simplified rule, a clear path foul cannot occur if the fouled player is in the act of shooting or if the foul is caused by the defender's attempt to intercept or deflect a pass intended for the player attempting to score in transition. So if you look at this clip here, Bradley Beal fouls Tory Craig of the Denver Nuggets while trying to intercept the pass. This was called as a clear path foul before, but now it no longer is because Beal is making a play on the ball as he's tried to go for the steal. Overall, I like this new simplified clear path rule. It was too complicated before and sometimes the calls were kinda weird, so now it should be better. Now for those wondering why the clear path foul is even a thing, I mean, two free throws and possession is pretty crazy, that's basically a flagrant two. And yet, nobody's really getting hurt. Well, that's the thing. The clear path foul was created so players don't get hurt. When someone's running down the court at full speed and gets fouled or pushed from behind, it's very dangerous. The clear path foul is supposed to prevent situations like that from happening, cause there's a big penalty to discourage players from committing a foul like that. Another reason is because the NBA wants to see more exciting highlights. Fast break dunks and alley-oops are the most exciting parts of the game. Fans want to see that. However, if someone gets fouled in transition before it happens, it's like, uh, well, that ruins the moment. So that's another reason why the clear path foul discourages defenders from fouling in transition. Regardless, the new rule change is now much more defined and clear, so there shouldn't be any more issues with arbitrary calls or anything like that. Lastly, the third rule change is the expanded definition of hostile acts for replay purposes. Basically, I think this just means refs could review some plays for hostile encounters and determine the punishment for them. They were allowed to do it before, but now I guess they could take a longer look at the replays and spend more time deciding the penalty. I'm not a big fan of this because I feel like the refs already spend too much time reviewing certain plays that don't need to be reviewed. So this new rule adds even more time to that. Like, if a player taunts another player, are the refs gonna go back to the replay screen and review that too? I don't know, I think that's unnecessary, just let the game play out. But I do understand why this change was made. The NBA wants to keep the game as clean as possible and punish anybody who tries to do anything hostile. Anyway, that sums up those three new rules. Over the last few seasons, we've seen quite a number of rule changes. None of these are drastic, none of them are gonna affect the game that much, but it's good that the NBA is trying to limit the ambiguity of some rules. I really like the new clear path rules because the rule needed a better definition for years. I remember some of those calls were ridiculous before. Personally, I think the next rule changes should have something to do with the 3 second rule. The defensive 3 second violation and the offensive 3 second violation. Those rules are dumb because most of the time the revs don't even call it. The only times they call it is when, like a player or the coach starts screaming it out. Cause let's be real, basketball is so fast, so much stuff is going on at the same time. You can't expect the refs to always pay attention to how long a player has been in the paint. I feel like if any rule or violation doesn't get called like 90% of the time, it shouldn't be in the NBA. Because it just makes the game so inconsistent. The 3 second violation is also a major reason why we barely see big men post up in the paint anymore, because they literally can't. They don't have enough time to get into position, ask for the ball, and then post up and do their move. Unless they start their post up from really far out, which is not good. Anyway, that's all folks. Let me know your thoughts on the new rule changes, and what rules do you think should the NBA take a look at? 
Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.